Welcome back to the channel. Recently, you guys have been showing mad love to my Learn FL in 5 Minute Beginner Tutorial. So I figured I would make it a series and do a part 2. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. All jokes aside, I appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving me. It means the world to me, I really appreciate it. In the last video, we focused more on this playlist area, uh, this big area right here. Now, we're gonna move into something called the channel rack and the piano roll. And there's gonna be information in here for everybody. I almost guarantee there's gonna be something in here that you don't know about. Now, it's a five minute tutorial. I know it's a lot of information, but you can re-watch it. This video is not going anywhere. I'm gonna do it in order. You learn the basics in the beginning. Once you have that down, you won't have to think about, what do I press to do this again? If you don't have to learn it all at once, nobody's expecting you to do that. This video will stay here. You're good. That being said, let's move into the video. All right, so, channel rack and piano roll. How do we get to the channel rack? You go up to this top area, this button right here, it kind of looks like a checklist. It's three rectangles, vertically aligned, left click it, boom, channel rack. All right, some cool stuff. If you want to drag a sound into your channel rack and start making a pattern, you just drag. So usually the first thing that I do whenever I have the channel rack open and I'm about to start doing the drums or anything of that nature, I go over here to this button right here. Right click it, you can set it to how long you want the, the, the channel rack to be. This is for your pattern. What I usually press is eight bars and 16 bars. Those are the only two that I really use. It's up to you. I usually do eight bars, so we're gonna do eight. On the left, next to this checkbox that we just used, we have a swing knob. Now this is gonna make things sound a little off time the more that you increase it, but that's actually a pretty good thing if you're going for something that has a little more swing to it, a little bounce. It's not bad. Just make sure you test it out, listen to it, and adjust like so. So before I tell you anything about the channel rack, really, you're probably wondering, why are these notes different colors? Why are these buttons different colors? Every measure. So if I play the metronome right now and you watch, there's gonna be a little thing that moves right here when I play it, watch. It's telling you where each measure starts. That's all it's telling you. The first one of every four, that's the new measure. It's basically just to let you know where you're at. It's a reference, it's just to help. So you can place notes on here, left click, boom. You can left click and drag if you're feeling a little spicy, add a lot of notes at the same time. Now, how do you delete? You can right click to delete one, or you can right click and hold and drag to delete multiple. Kind of the same as you did with left click and drag, but it's right click. You can get a little spicy, do a little pattern, however you wanna do. Say you're completely not fucking with the idea, control X to delete, or you can right click on the sound itself and do cut. I would get in the habit of doing control X though. Just think about you being able to control your X. It's not possible, hence it deletes it like you did her. Command X for Mac users. And usually I do a bit more of my drum programming in piano roll, but there is actually a lot that you can do on the channel rack. So since we have already opened up this vast world of buttons, that you're probably like, what the fuck? Do we have to learn all of it? No, you don't. There's only four buttons on this that you, okay. There's only five buttons that you need to focus on in this whole arsenal of buttons. Fill each two step, that's gonna be probably for your hi-hats. It just kind of gives you a base to work on. You can do fill four, fill eight. It just depends on the genre that you're going for, right? This delete button, but you can also do alt delete. And then if you fuck up and delete something that you weren't supposed to, then you can do control Z and it'll bring it back. So if I fuck up and I'm like, oh shit, I just, oh my God, I just spent so long on that. Control Z, you're good. Say you over undid. That's very confusing. If you press Control Z too many times or Command Z, you can do Control Alt Z and it'll bring them back. And you can keep pressing that or you can hold it down. It's whatever you wanna do. But yeah, we're getting there. You guys are getting there. You guys are getting there. You're getting there. I'm proud of you. So this channel rack is gonna look a lot more complicated when you start adding sounds. Like, obviously I only have a few sounds in here, but once you start getting sounds, it adds up. So before we get into anything else, I'm gonna show you what a channel rack looks like in an actual beat. So that way you can just be prepared by that. All right, boom, I just opened up another project. And as you can see, our channel rack is fucking huge at this point. But this is realistically how it is in a beat. Yours may not look like this, obviously, even when you're done making a beat. But if it does and you're like, man, it's so, uh, I just hate it. It's, it's triggering me. Then you can go to this top drop down menu on the top left and you can do unsorted. That will show you all your drums only, everything that you've dragged in. It doesn't have to just be drums. It's anything you've dragged into this channel rack. Now, if you wanna to go to audio, so this is stuff that you've exported or rendered out on your playlist 
or something like a sample you've brought in. It's anything foreign basically to the program. Typically, I stay on the unsorted side so that way I can just see all of my drums and everything that I, I'm actually working with. Usually all of the other stuff is just on the playlist, so you don't need to see it. Over here on the left, we have power button, so you can mute this to mute a sound, or you can solo a sound by control left clicking. It's gonna mute everything else. And then you can control left click on that same sound that you soloed to bring everything back. Ta-da, look at that. Command left click. Mac users, you should be able to convert these goddamn, uh, what's it called, shortcuts by now. What else do we have? Okay, we have a panning knob just by that button that we were talking about that mutes it or solos it. We have a pan knob. It's just gonna make it play in your left or right ear, depending on which way you have it turned. If it's left, it's gonna be your left ear. If it's right, it's gonna be your right ear. The knob next to that is a volume knob. It's just for general things, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you put a pattern down and you, you're like, damn, this fucking hi-hat loud as fuck. Let's turn that motherfucker down. You feel me? If you wanna add a new sound, you can go down to this plus button. Wow, that's what it does. You're adding to it. Addition. Look how easy that is to remember. You're welcome. You can add any sounds from there. Boom. You just click it. If you don't see it, then you can go to more plugins and just search in whatever you're looking for. Hello? Except for that. What else is there that you need to know? You see how if you start clicking on any area for a sound, you see how this uh, colored outline is hovering over the rectangle if I switch to any sound, that means you have that sound selected. You can manually select it by clicking on that little rectangle. And this is some cool shit. I bet some of y'all didn't know this. Now this is a little more intermediate, but listen, it's fucking nice though. If you like your shit organized and woo woo woo, or you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case is, you can select by clicking on this little rectangle here and do alt arrow key. I think that's option on Mac and it moves it. You see how it's moving up and down the order? Now this is very useful when you're going to go mix later, but that's for another tutorial. So you can left click and drag to select multiple and move them up or down. You can drag and select a few. And then if you're if you're like, oh shit, there's another one that I wanna select, but it's not right next to it. Like if I wanted to select this very bottom one, then you do shift left click after that. I'm not sure what that is on, on Mac, I don't remember. You can move those however you want. So this little graph thing, it looks like some stock market bullshit. You wanna click that, I promise it's not some Forex uh, pyramid scheme. You click it and then boom, it opens you up on this velocity page. I know there's a lot going on right here, I understand, but listen. The, these bars are literally, it's a bar graph for where your notes are placed. Think about it like that. The higher the bar, the louder it's gonna be. It even gets brighter. That's what literally what velocity is, how hard that sound is punching through, you feel me? So if you were like, okay, I like this part, but there's some quiet hi-hats, you could just raise these motherfuckers up, whatever, woo woo woo. And you can control left click, drag like you was doing on the channel rack earlier. If you fuck up, you can control Z, you're always safe, it's fine. Just keep doing it until you're straight, boom. I think beginners might be doing this, so clone, you can clone it and it'll just make the exact same sound. So if I wanted like another pattern of this hi-hat and I just wanted to do something different or try something out, you could just right click, clone, it'll make the exact sound pop up. As you can see, it's the same sound. We're gonna start getting a little intermediate here. All right, so I need you guys to take a little breather. Just take a deep breath, relax. All right, so now we're gonna move into the piano roll. Boom, I know. It looks, it looks a little intimidating. There's a lot of lines, there's a lot of bullshit going on. I understand. So when you place something on the piano rack, right? If I placed a note, as you can see, in the, it appears in the piano roll as well, but it's gonna always appear as a C5, a middle C, that universal note that it'll always be if you place something on the piano rack. All right, so let's get started. Same thing, think of this like a, like a, like a nerdy channel rack. Boom, you can place notes by left clicking, same thing. This is the pencil tool. As you can see, my tool is a pencil, my cursor is a pencil. You can place one note with the pencil tool at a time. How did I just select all of that? That's a good question, Anthony, that's a good question. Control, left click, drag, boom. If you wanna delete, control X, same as the channel rack, that's crazy. Let's talk about what's really important. You can place one note at a time with the pencil tool. Right? If you press B for brush, paint brush, think of it like, you're, you know what I'm saying, you're painting something. You can left click and drag all you want and it's gonna place hella notes. You can also right click and drag to delete. This is really good for hi-hats, I use it all the time. Then boom, you can just paint brush by pressing B. Um, if that doesn't work and it's playing a note, then you have this button right here turned on. Typing keyboard to piano keyboard. That basically means when you press a button, it's gonna play a note. 
So you want this off whenever you're doing shit in the piano roll, unless you feel like fucking playing your hi-hats. I don't fucking. Control T to turn it off if you don't know where the button is. There's a lot that we can really talk about in here, but I'm just gonna give you guys straight commands and shortcuts that I use all the time. If you want to uh, change notes, as you can see, I'm locked in no matter where I drag my cursor at. All you, but all you have to do to change those notes while you're dragging is shift, left click, and drag. Say you have a note here, and you just don't like how it looks like these gaps. You don't like the gaps in between. Control L, boom. Now they're all as long as they possibly can be. What, what else can we do in here? Say you have a little pattern over here on this first section and you really like this pattern, all right? You just wanna duplicate it. You don't feel like clicking them in one by one. Who the fuck wants to do that? All you gotta do is go up to this area, this top area. It's kind of darker, should be darker than the rest of the piano roll and it should have like a one, two, three, four. It's basically counting your beats, your bars, whatever you wanna call it. You can right click on that area and drag and it's selecting and then boom, you could do control C to copy, control B, it's gonna paste that over, it's gonna paste that bitch over to the next available area. It does get a little wonky sometimes, but you can also, uh, you can always, you can continue with the right click and drag, even if you've already selected an area. Um, if you wanna deselect, then you can control D, that will deselect. So say you had something that was more of a melodic aspect, just imagine that these hi-hats are now notes right and you're like oh shit this sounds hard but i kind of want it to be something different you can do alt y to flip it you know what i'm saying just try it try and do stuff and this this will flip it horizontally which literally just means whatever is at the back end of the pattern is now going to be at the front and whatever was at the front is now at the back if you flip it vertically you could probably do the math whatever's at the top will now be at the bottom note wise and whatever's at the bottom will now be at the top what if you played whatever live this could be an instrument or hi-hats or whatever the fuck you wanted and you're like okay this is cool but some of them are kind of like off time you could do Control q that's going to snap it to the nearest line if you wanted to duplicate or select some notes and just move them to a different area you can Control left click drag select whatever notes and then shift left click and it's going to clone it and then if you hold shift, it's gonna stay stuck in that line that you're in. If you let go of it while you're dragging, you can freely move it. So we have the cut tool. If you had a four step or like just slower hi-hat pattern and you're like, okay, I want it to be kind of faster, then you can select this slice tool just by pressing C for cut. And uh, you can just left click and drag. Then you press alt and then left click and drag and you can cut it literally wherever you want. You can also do shift and it'll snap to lines in the grid so you can't cut in between anything else. Hold down shift and you can spam just like left click drag. You don't even have to let go of shift. All right, so say you have a pattern of who fucking cares, just a bunch of notes, right? And you wanted to change the velocities of whatever. You don't like how it sounds so robotic, they all hit the same. Then you could just left click and drag down or up boom 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 you can right click and drag and it'll kind of give this uh even uh ascending or descending strength to it like you see how they're kind of moving with each other you could do shift left click and drag to make them all the same the same velocity strength now if you wanted to do something else like say you wanted to pan shit you could just go to this control button this drop down menu select note pan boom and then you just drag like i said up is left down is right ear so up left ear, down right ear. You can duplicate the note by doing, selecting it, control left drag, shift left click, that duplicates it. So now there's two of them. I can control up arrow to move it up an octave, or you can shift up arrow, move them up and down one note at a time. This is what patterns look like when they're finished. So hopefully you guys learned something. If you enjoyed this video, all I ask is that you subscribe, maybe hit the like button. I appreciate you guys. And I was gonna give you guys an example showing like how I do it. But I have a lot of videos doing that and it's already been 50 minutes of me explaining these shortcuts that I have to make into five minutes. I love y'all, I appreciate all the support. Thank you guys so much. If you need any sounds to help out inspiration and creativity, I have plenty in the description below. I'm uploading three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all at 10.30 a.m. If we get this video to a thousand likes, I'm gonna set the goal pretty high, a thousand likes, I'll give away a few free kits to some lucky commenters. I love y'all. Be safe and enjoy your improved workflow.